Greetings on this warm summer morning. My name is Jim Lapp. In my family, I became the tallest of the nine siblings. My father was slightly taller than I am, and I have a few nephews who are several inches taller than me. I did not get, grow up giving much thought to my size. Occasionally, I was reminded that in some situations, height is a benefit. Occasionally, I will say to my wife, Mim, when she can't reach something up on a high shelf, I say, that's the reason you married me. And of course, she says that's not true, but there are benefits to being tall at times. Being tall, I sometimes struggle, though, to get into certain cars. When I worked as a plumber's helper during high school and made repairs in an old house with a low basement ceiling, I occasionally broke a light bulb with my head when I failed to stoop. Soon after my first marriage, we moved into Indiana to, for me to attend seminary. We rented a furnished basement apartment. And when the landlord saw my height, he proceeded to cut the side boards of the bed and extend the bed to accommodate my size. So height has benefits and it has drawbacks. Now we don't know how tall Jesus was, but Jesus seemed to favor small things. One day in his ministry, Jesus started, people started bringing to Jesus their children and wanted Jesus to touch them. And apparently the touch of Jesus was enough to bless these children, then empower them. The disciples were upset at seeing all these parents and children taking Jesus' time, and so they sternly warned them to move away and take their children elsewhere. But when Jesus realized what was happening, he said, let the children come to me. Then turning to the disciples, he said, truly I tell you, who does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Then Jesus proceeded to bless the children. Listen to this brief conversation between Jesus and the disciples in Luke 17. The apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. The Lord replied, if you had faith the size of a mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea and it would obey you. In other words, Jesus said, it doesn't take a lot of faith for God to work. Faith the size of a grain of mustard seed is pretty small. One person described a mustard seed as one to two millimeters in diameter, that's very small. And to put this into perspective, this person said it would take about 100 to 150 mustard seeds lined up to make an inch. Now, how often have you and I heard others say, or we have said it ourselves, that we don't have enough faith sometimes to believe that certain things can occur? So we face a major decision or a huge challenge, and we waver in our faith. Dare I ask God for help with this? From what, God, what Jesus said, the size of our faith need not be a hindrance to seeking God's help with our needs. It seems Jesus wanted his disciples to know that greatness is not in size or amount of things, but in being small, innocent, and receptive. Rather, Jesus said we need to become like children to enter God's kingdom. There's a humbleness of spirit and an open and receptive heart that's required to serve in God's kingdom. And the simple faith of children reminds us that skills alone do not make us effective disciples. Now, I said earlier that Jesus seemed to favor small things. Do you remember the story where Jesus used a small boy's lunch to feed 5,000 people? He borrowed someone's small donkey one day to ride into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday. Jesus once saw a rejected man up in a tree. He had climbed up there because he was so short, and Jesus called him down and invited himself to his house for dinner. His name was Zacchaeus. It's one of the great stories of spiritual transformation in the Gospels. So we can say that small is beautiful in the Bible. Small in size, small in faith, small in recognized abilities, small in wealth, small in reputation. And I confess that sometimes, though I'm tall, I sometimes feel small. Like when I'm with people who I feel are more accomplished than I am, 
or when I can't figure something out that seems like it, I should know how to do it, but it eludes me. Then I can be hard on myself, and I need to remember that Jesus embraces and honors smallness. Now, those of us living here at Landis are part of a society that sometimes treats older people as lesser than youth. We can then feel small because it's the young people that are held up. Of course, we want to honor youth, and we're glad for their leadership. Recently in our church, one Sunday, a teenage young woman was the preacher. I'm grateful for her and her willingness to serve in a leadership role. But do we embrace the view of society or the view of Jesus regarding our age? We can think we're small because we're not as educated as some of our neighbors, or that as a female, I'm secondary, or with the fewer financial resources, I'm less of a person, or a physical impairment make, makes me feel small. For whatever reason, we may think of ourselves as lesser and thus small. The invitation of Jesus is to treat our smallness as an opportunity and not as a burden. Remember, feeling small does not disqualify us from serving. Even those who are small can pray for others. We can encourage others in love. Those we see as more accomplished than us more than likely have areas in their life where they also feel small. Allow me a personal illustration. When I speak in these chapel, these devotionals in this chapel, often there are only three people here. One is the one who operates the video, one up plays piano or organ, and then the speaker. And I confess to you that sometimes I wonder when I'm speaking to an empty room, is anybody listening? That's my smallness. When I hear a response from someone or receive a note from a listener, I'm encouraged. Our smallness makes us vulnerable, doesn't it? Encouragement is a gift when we experience smallness. That's a gift we can give to each other in this community. My wife, Mim, passed on to me some remarks on smallness by Trish Stefanik. Stefanik writes, maybe God's not done with me yet. I'm listening for the new movement of the spirit in this season of life. I begin this day cultivating the soil of prayer, welcoming my smallness, listening to my surroundings for the spirit's invitation having faith that the mystery and largest of God is always turning the world's stature on its head, want, wanting to grow us and realize possibility beyond our imagining. Small people can imagine great things. How about we welcome our smallness, not as an excuse for disengaging, but as an opportunity for daily dependence on God, for possibilities, and for lifelong growing growth beyond what we now experience. In the eyes of God, small is beautiful. In so doing, we receive God's kingdom and are among the great in the world when we so live. That's my wish and my prayer for myself and for the residents in this community. Join me in prayer. How great you are, creator and redeemer God. We come to you humbly in our smallness to confess our need for you. Often our faith is weak. We depend on you for our daily strength and hope. We need your encouragement and the support of one another. Forgive us when we're too proud to confess our dependence on you and those around us. Help us today to notice the many ways you bless us and awaken in each of us a grateful heart. Through Jesus we pray, amen. In a moment, you're going to hear a song played that probably many of you learned to sing when you were a child. And I invite you as you listen to sing along if you want to, wherever you're at. This, the song is, Jesus Loves Me.